promises of God and matters in relationships. And I want to trust God for His clarity even tonight as we look at His Word. So I want us to turn to chapter 7 of Song of Songs. And uh, I want to pick from verse 1 that will read the entire chapter even as we continue from where we left. We have so far looked at these two lovebirds from the moment they met. We have seen how their love grew. We have seen how they got married. We have seen the challenges that they faced. We see how they actually were able to sort them out. And, and, and a lot of things. We have seen their honeymoon night. We have seen their commitment and pledge on their relationship and marriage and courtship. And very important lessons therein that I believe God is bringing to us. And in chapter 7 we continue to learn more concerning their union. The Bible says from us, verse, verse 1. How beautiful your sandal feet, O Prince daughter. Your graceful legs are like jewels, the work of a craftsman hands. Your navel is a rounded goblet that never lacks blended wine. Your waist is a round of is a mound of wheat encircled by lilies. Your breasts are like two forms, twigs of a gazelle. Your neck is like an ivory tower. Your eyes are the pools of Hesbon by the gate of Bar Rabin. Your nose is like the Tower of Lebanon, looking toward Damascus. Verse 5. Your head crowns you like Mount Camel. Your hair is like royal tapestry. The king is held captive by its tresses. How beautiful you are, and how pleasing, O oh love, with your delights. Your stature is like that of the palm, and your breasts like dust clusters of fruit. I say, I will climb the palm tree. I will take hold of its fruit. May your breast be like the clusters of the vine, the fragments of your breath like apples, and your mouth like the best wine. May the wine go straight to my lover, flowing gently over the lips and teeth. Verse 10. I belong to my lover and his desire is for me. Come, my lover, let us go to the countryside. Let us spend the night in the villages. Let us go early to the vineyards to see if the vines have budded, if their blossoms have opened, if the pomegranates are in bloom, there I will give you my love. The mandrakes sent out their fragments, and at our door is every delicacy, both new and old, that I have stored up for you, my love. Praise the Lord. And we move to chapter 7, and we see it is still portrayed to us the growth of these two couples in marriage. We have seen challenges that they are faced with. We saw that although we, they, 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 they are this beautiful love that many would, would really wish for and expect they had challenges, but still would be able to sort them out. And we still see the, the, their, their growth, their experience, how they actually are able to experience marriage together. We can witness, you know, the progress in their love. Their love is growing for one another. And, and this, this chapter is using a number of images. That, that, that are more intimate, actually even more than the ones that were using on their wedding night, that are much more older as we speak about their love for one another. And what we are seeing is a healthy, is a maturing marriage between Solomon and his wife. And you look at the descriptions all the way from verse 1. Verse 1 describes how beautiful her wife's feet were. And in Guananisha, like the work of a great artisan, and, 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 and is still describing their love, their desire, their passion for one another. Even in marriage, it didn't fade away. It was not lost. In verse 2, he compares her navel to a rounded goblet of wine that never lacks blended wine. Some of one of the sweetest wine. And he must have meant your body is as desirable and intoxicating like wine. <coughs> And, and, and you look at those verses in verse 4, her neck was beautiful and valuable, like an ivory tower. In the same verse, it says her eyes were beautiful and their effect on him was as refreshing as the pool of Heshbon, which was a city in Moab. And, 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 and by comparing, in verse 5, by comparing her head to Mount Carmel, you see Solomon is speaking to 
his life, who was the queen. And he meant that she had, she had a queenly bearing that was majestic and awesome. And, and you look through those descriptions, you can be able to see time has passed, this, 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 they're aging in marriage. But there is something that is not dying. There is something that is not dying. They are love for one another. From the very beginning of this book, we are introduced to their passion and love for one another. Their desire for each other. And, and it continues, verse 7 to 9, he expresses his desire for intimacy with his wife. Solomon says how he wanted to enjoy the sweet and intoxicating fruit of her love. In verse 10, the phrase that is used in verse 10 is a phrase that has been used before. We have read it in another place in this book. But here, there is a difference. He says, my lover is mine. Abba said is just mine. He says that his desire is for me. That is, that is, that is, that is, that is what is different from how it was used before. He says, my lover is mine. But here he says, my lover's desire is for me. A very clear way of stating possession. A very clear way of stating how they actually and I want to say this to, to, to especially men tonight that there is no better way there is no better way for you as a man and tomorrow as a husband and tomorrow as a father that for you to actually belong to you there is no better way for you to belong to your wife than for your desire to be only for your wife and nobody else one as a theory. That one of the best gifts as a man you can ever give even to your children is to love their mother. To love their mother. To desire. To, to, no one else. 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 You know when we were in high school, there was a campaign in a very common chill, 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 chill. To be chill, 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 chill. That was the common trend then. Yeah, chill. Yeah, not chill. And this was the sign of chill. It's not working, so cancer. Be faithful to one partner. Be faithful to one partner. Be faithful to one partner. And, and, and you see over the years, even governments, even institutions are lowering their standards. So be faithful to one partner. What I was seeing, Juicy, the last one that I've seen is Weka Kondom Mpangoni. Sasa wamekubali kuna mpango ya kaa. Sasa siyo mtu wa yuko faithful kwa partner. Sasa wamekubali kuna mpango ya kaa. Sasa siyo mtu wa yuko faithful kwa partner. Just be safe. Just be safe. When I'm going to love Bila regrets, a condom can be advertised as love Bila regrets. You can use this with any person I hear to call regrets. One of the best things you can give, you know, especially in marriage, because of the uniqueness, the sanctity, the importance of this institution that God has given, is that your desire, like Solomon, this is the wife saying with a lot of confidence that his desire is for me alone. That your desire can be for your wife alone. Now it's used to not say anything and say anything because now it's a sahi. 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 To be very, to be very clear that as a man, you cannot be so mistaken that you are, you are, you are considering, you know, who you, na who you, na who you, na who you. And, 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 and kwako yani you know na tunika waida. Ni kama yani ukona, ukona, ukona elimination method yenye ina mutumia tu kwa right somewhere. One of the best gifts. She had become so taken by the love of Solomon for her that she did not even mention her possession of him. He says, and his, his desire is for me. After your responsibility, and I'm still speaking especially to him, after your responsibility to God as a husband in future, because as we look at the context of this book, it's speaking about marriage. All of us as Christians have our number one responsibilities to God. After your responsibility to God, especially men, because one woman to Naita Jimsada, especially men, a man's chief responsibility after your responsibility to God is your responsibility to your wife and to your children. They come first before ministry, they come first before business, they come first before your friends, they come first before every other thing. What does it mean, one woman? It's very important. It's very important. 
Mizi tuko na wanaume huwa not family men. Kazi yao ni kulipa school fees na na kunulia mtoto uniform na kufanya hizo vitu. Yeah. There was a lady hapa Moi University ali, 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 alikuwa shock sana. I think ili muhit after some time. She was calling his dad. Na leo aliamua tu kumcola msalimie. Yaani amepiga ame simu sasa ile father anashika na mwambie si nilisema hiyo pesa nitatuma. Yaani hakuna hata salamu. The first thing is nilikwambia hiyo pesa nitatuma. Yaani my only relationship with my children ni school fees. Kama kuna issue hakuna. You know you ask many of us here. How many of us can say, you know, I I, I ask men this question. How much time have you ever spent with your father? Mimi kaatu chini mwangia wewe tu na yeye. Na baba yako tu tunaongea sio pesa na tafua sio nini you are just talking. You are just talking. You and your father. Mothers are having the greatest influence on children. Enda kwa mashule, visiting day, parents day, watu na mother tupu. Hakuna watu, hakuna mamu. You don't see fathers who are interested in their children. You don't see. Baba kuna high school schools who have a sema kuna parents day ya fathers peke. Yani ni parents day, lakini ni parents day ya fathers. Yoko yani wanatafuta kila iti yako waleta. Na bado kuna mkina atatuma mama. who are busy making money for children who you have no time for. Unajua, mungu wa maintain, a maintain, kila mtoto, a grow with a father who can be able to offer the fatherly guidance, fatherly discipline, fatherly instruction, availability in the lives of the children as the same as the mother. But a healthy child who grows with that, Unajua sikizi hata tukiongea kuhusu families you can have a family where we have a father and mother living under one roof lakini huyu mzee hata awe hata kuna watu hapa hata mnaweza sababu the number of times tumekula sasa na father kwa mesa tunaweza sababu fathers who can really be able to be available I I I love my father my father said for me are very you know you know when when you when you look at experiences around you appreciate some of the things one of the things I thank God for is that I was raised up with a godly heritage. Father, I took water to the school. I was like, I have to find out about it. To review, to remind us, to make sure we go out there. We are not just about to do it. We are not just about to go out there. We are not just about to go out there. We are not just about to go out there. Just tell me. Just tell me before you do anything. That was my father. My father was a bishop, very busy. But to tell me, I will sit all of us down. Not only I'm a bishop, but I'm a very busy. Like any any time you need me, tell me. I can even cancel any ministry. Yeah, very good. You come first. You come first. You are priority. Family comes first. Today many people are sacrificing family at the altar of looking for money. Family at the altar of pursuing even ministry. No wonder pastors kids we know their stories. They even hate ministry because I've been getting the money about. After God, man, your responsibility is to your wife and your children. You can pursue all these other things. Sabu na haja tuseme tunatoka kujenga mafamilia zenye atuko wa faile. Kasi yako siyo kulipa rent na kufele kwa tuko shule peke yake. You need to be available in their lives. And it's something that is really needed today. We are lacking. We are lacking that. We are lacking that. Women are having to face the hard duty of running their homes even with fathers there. Kuna nyumba ato kienda ata unajua kusuri madeni yuka mafate. Yedi ya nene kumanene. Yedi ya nene influence vitu. Baka ata elevu ni nini nendelea. I'm going to make money for you. And those are not worthy. Those are not worthy. Even in church today, kama kanisa, pastor, any other pastor will tell you, kanisa, you want to keep your mama and our daughter. You don't see men. You don't see men. And we have a lot of issues here. So, what we see in sex, his desire is for me alone. She is not battling about that. This is not just in courtship. In courtship, but now she is not here by the way. And amazingly, she is not here by the way. In courtship, she is not here by the way. But that needs to be kept alive. Anything that you feel gross, anything that you neglect, ultimately dies. We are clearly seeing that God has given men the responsibility to take even the initiative. That's why you begin with even, even relationships. Be scared of a girl when you are there, you are not going to be able to get your money. Be very scared of that. Be very scared of that. Be very scared of that. Can you hear me? I'm going to share with you. Ah, here's your point. God has created us equal men 
given us roles, uniquely given men roles, uniquely given ladies roles for the sake of order. For the sake of order. That men are the initiators. Men are supposed to offer leadership. Squeeze out of your gate in a submission. Yani, you finish a lady's course submission. Before you understand the godly submission, submission today has been made to look like we come a kukua yani when we become a dormant. You know, our thought of submission is becoming a dormant. Being slept on. But, but let me tell you, men, there is no lady that will struggle to submit to a man who truly loves her. Hakuna. Hakuna. There is no lady that will struggle to submit to you if she is so sure this man truly loves her. And that is what Jesus gives us. Vice versa, Pia ni ukoi. Hakuna manome atashingwa kulivi nyumba kama wewe kama manamke utasubmit. Na wewe siyo kichwa ingine kwa nyumba. Because the patience is the place where we are given romantic love biblically. And the Bible says that if you want to know the romantic love that the Bible speaks about, look at the model of Jesus Christ and the church. That Jesus loves the church and the church submits to her. Jesus sacrificially loves the church. The kind of love that men we are called to, to love our wives, is a love that when you look at it, it's not that it's impossible for you to produce that kind of life, of love, unless Jesus is your own. It's impossible. Imagine Jesus' love for the church. The church was imperfect. The church was undeserving. The church even resisted that love. The church even mocked this Jesus. Even after loving us, we again fail him again and again, but he still comes after us so that he can present us perfect before the Father. It looks at that love, that sacrificial love, that can even offer its love, its life, for the sake of purifying us from Satan. And the Bible says, likewise, men, love your wives. That it is not a love that you can defend in Kenya. Like Kenya, 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 and when we waken up to the godly love that God is calling us to, it's easy. But the Bible does not give call you as a future wife to submit just because your husband is doing ABCD. Or for you to love because your wife is doing ABCD. It's a, it's a command. It's the biblical standards that we need to live up to. Our love cannot be defined by source. Our love cannot be defined by popular opinion. Our love cannot be defined by the relationships you see around us. Our love must be defined by the Bible. Squeeze imagine you talk to the class two. Watch another class. You get to some talk. Papa, what's the other talk to the class two? You may go to watch some year six. You may watch year eight. What's that? You are going to learn it. You know what you are going to learn. Every day of your life, as in, but when you enter school, you will not be a brother or a sister. You will not be a brother or a sister. You will not be a brother or a sister. You will not be a brother or a sister. You will not be a brother or a sister. You will not be a brother or a sister. You will not be a brother or a sister. You will not be a brother or a sister. You will not be a brother or a sister. Yeah, I mean, 
if it's a feeling, then you cannot be able to manage. You cannot be able to sustain. Because feelings change. Feelings depend on very many other things that are going on even in your life. It's a decision. It's a decision that is based on some truth. It's a decision that is based on, on the commitments you're making. It's a covenant decision that is based on a very clear passage to one another. It is a confession. And I'm saying you can never meet these standards unless truly you have Jesus Christ as your Lord. Unless truly you are surrendered to Him. Unless truly you believe that He can be able to actually pour out His love in your heart and shed it forth and make it actually something that can be replicated. We come to chapter 8. And from verse 1, the Bible says, If only you are to me like a brother who was nursed at my mother's breast, then if I found you outside, I will kiss you, and no one will despise me. I will lead you and bring you to my mother's house. She who has taught me, I will give you spiced wine to drink, the nectar of my pomegranates, Verse 3, his left arm is under my head and his right arm embraces me. Daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you, do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. Verse 5, who is this coming up from the desert, leaning on her lover? Under the apple tree, I roused you. There your mother conceived you. There she who was in labor gave you birth. Bless me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm. For love is as strong as death, its jealousy and yielding as the grave. It burns like blazing fire, like a mighty flame. Verse 7. Many waters cannot quench love, rivers cannot wash it away. If one were to give all the wealth of his house for love, it would be utterly scorned. Verse 8. We have a young sister, and her breasts are not yet grown. What shall we do for our sister for the day she is spoken for? If she is a wall, we will build towers of silver on her. If she is a door, we will enclose her with panels of cedar. Verse 10, I am a wall, and my breasts are like towers. Thus I have become in his eyes like one bringing contentment. Verse 11, Solomon had a vineyard in, in, in Baal He let out his vineyard to tenants. Each was to bring for its fruit a thousand shekels of silver. But my own vineyard is mine to give. The thousand shekels are for you, O Solomon, and two hundred are for those who take its fruit. You who dwell in the gardens with friends in attendance, let me hear your voice. Come away, my lover, and be like a gazelle or like a young star on the spice-laden mountains. And just like the very first chapter of Song of Songs, this last chapter, the first one opens with their love and their desire and their affection for one another, and you still see, you see the wife demonstrating a growing desire for greater intimacy with her husband. This thing is not easy today. It's not easy. It's not easy. Sikusi kuna watu watu wanaishi nyumba moja rufu moja bedu moja lakini shida. Hata wakilala mwingine anaangalia hiyo ukuta mwingine hiyo ukuta. As in intimacy. Unajua you can't fake it. You cultivate it. You can't fake it. You don't assume things na mnaenda hizi vitu na assume ndio zinakula 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 zinakula. Na unapatanga wakati ikifika imeumana it's many things that are really been assumed. It's cultivated. It's devotion. It's a decision. It's a decision. You know, verse 1, you see, and I said, I wish you were popular, I am. You only get a bit like, yeah, in their setting, just like ours, public displays of affection were discouraged. People frowned at public display of affection, except in the case of immediate family members. Eh? My, my friend John Mwangi, when they got married with the fiancé, I kind of carried your mind in it, I'm forgetting the, the place. You know, they used to take a walk in the evening with the wife. So she desires to really show her love even to her husband, even in public. But the society and other expectations by then is because in when I say my wish to go to you want to sing your over any time I will do all I want with you. Your sister. I wish for my brother that was your sister. Because then I can do these things freely without 
without having to mind hmm? so that it will be acceptable to display her affection at any time. Coming, 
and securities and the things we have seen before. And, and you are seeing a growing love. It's possible in our time for two godly people to come together and be married and to experience the joy of love and intimacy and a marriage that is thriving. One has to It's possible. I don't know what I'm saying. Ah, I'm saying that I'm going to marry. That's how we get what she is. That's how we get what she is. <laughs> it is two people. The two of you can decide if you want your relationship and marriage to be as beautiful as it can be or as hell as it can be. It's two people. Text two. It's text two. It doesn't happen by accident. It's because people are good. It's because people are instructed by the true source of love. Is God Himself. And they are not allowing any other voices, any other cultural expectations, any other things and influences and previous conditions and histories that they have gone through to dictate the rest of their life. It's possible. Marriage, God has designed to be one of the best, the most fulfilling, satisfying, beautiful relationship between two people where even children can grow in that understanding and that environment. Where they can really even experience God. But here we do not matter in our generation because people are not really allowing the word of God to be the absolute authority. And marriage is not about sex. Hmm? Well, I'm not to what you are married. What percentage of your marriage is spent in sexual intercourse? It's about companionship. It's not just sex, it's companionship. Companionship. People being together, loving each other, being involved in each other's life, thriving and maturing and, and, and cultivating the, 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 the union. Hmm? It's, it's, it's a companionship. It's a companionship. You see companionship here. This is companionship. In verse 4, it says, Promise me, O women of Jerusalem, not to awaken love until the time is right. Promise me. Promise me. You can be able to actually have the best of what God has designed for you. But do not awaken things. Do not pursue these relationships before their time. Do not. Do not. And I will tell you for a fact. You may give us the same relationship already. I. Seriously. I have done my mark. Please do yours. I have looked at all relationships that lead to marriage. As many as I know. I have done my math. And I have seen an average relationship from relationship to marriage. Average, wait, in four or five years. Four or five years. And people marry from as early as three years after campus. But imagine first year. What's that? I'll choose to do a one in one. Mimi ni ngengere 
relationship first year second year mtu ni news ni pata baby yangu sasa unajua vile media kama sinajua and today the university is one of the best place where people are actually having them wachana na high school wachana na high school hata baada unanisikiza na ulikuwa si uchi ama ni wa high school bro tutapata hapa si wenye ulipata high school you look at many leaders in churches today you look at many people that are that are impacting this Kenya for Jesus 70% of them will tell you their foundation was laid in campus or colleges 70% of them the kind the kind the kind of structures programs relationships teachings platforms that you get here you cannot even compare with your local church always the kind of fellowships accountability influences I imagine you take time to teach and have some of the best for some of you this is the place you live and hear God's calling for your life this is the place you discover your spiritual gifts this is the place passions will be awakened in you that you never knew were there this is the place you will come to really be serious about your walk with God you think you are serious you are not serious this is the place you will learn prayer this is the place there are values convictions that will be laid that you will never have had anywhere else Ukishenge ya relationship first year You already may be cut off na very many other like German friendships Ume wana watu wengine without any attachment to grow free You na consume your attention now It's to that one person And you really use that opportunity to really grow So do not awaken before it's time And I want to be a little And 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 verse 5 he appeals back to their beginning How they have their love with them You read verse 5 and I wrote it when you are the answer And they are going back They are going back In verse 6, no. In the Old Testament, a seal was used to indicate ownership of a person's value possessions. So you put your seal. Yani ni kienda seal, ni naonyesha I own this possession. And it's not just any possession, valuable possession. So he's asking Solomon, He's asking, he's, he's asking her lover. He's, <coughs> the beloved is asking to be her lover's most valued possession. I want to be your most valued possession. A possession that will influence your thoughts, and some over your heart. A possession that will influence your actions over your arm. I, I, want, to be, I want to be one with you. I want to be one with you, my husband. Yoko na watu wanaweza kuwa married at a relationship. Lakini ukikuwa na issues unaanza kuona huyu. Ukikuwa na issues unaanza kushia nini huyu. Ukikuwa na joy issues unaanza kufikia ni huyu. Small the one you are united to you are and it wages you apart. And say I want it. And in the rest of verse 6 and verse 7 she gives the explanation to explain why she is making such a request. And when we look at those verses they tell us the power of love as depicted in the book of Song of Songs. They use very many words there. It is as universal and irresistible as death. You know, death is universal to all of us. Everybody knows if Jesus tarries upon the name. So it is, it is universal. Hmm? It is exclusive and possessive like the grave. It is passionate as blazing fire, invisible and persevering as many waters and rivers. And all this is true. You know, all those huge, big words that are used to describe love. All those things are true about love. Because of the one who is the source of love, the creator of all power, the creator of the universe, God himself is the creator of such a powerful thing that words fail to actually describe. So great it is love. God is love. God is love. God is love. And his love is expressed in many forms, including romantic love. You can never experience true romance apart from God. Today we are lied about romance that is not biblical and we think that that is the true romance. It's not. A lot of it is lust. The source of love is God. How can we experience love without the source of this love? And it's so powerful. It matches all this description because of the one who originally provides love. The source of this powerful love is God. The final statement in verse 8 about love it speaks about it being priceless. Love is priceless. It is a inadequate to love. You cannot buy love. You wish you can. 
Imagine the most valuable things of this life have nothing to do with money. You think if you marry somebody who is rich now you will have a good life, no? When you pursue money, there are things money cannot buy. And some of the best things in this life, in this life, cannot be bought. There are things that are given. Hmm? It is priceless. One's wealth will be totally inadequate to purchase love. In fact, such money will be scorned because love cannot be bought. If love is priceless, how can it be obtained? And it gives us the answer. The answer is that it must be given. You receive love. You receive love. You earn love. Love. Love I couldn't do by accident. You don't struggle loving people who actually make that love possible to be loved. And there is no great experience in this world like, you know, loving and being loved back and knowing that that love is actually being reciprocated, is being cherished, is being, you know, all... There's mutuality to it. It's, 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 it's one of the deepest satisfactions you can actually get. So love is a gift from God. He gives to us. It's also something we give to others. Love is given. Love is not bought. You can't buy it with money. There are, there are people in this world who can have everything they want, but there are things you cannot buy. It can be fake, it cannot last. It can be pretend, it cannot last. True love is given from the heart. It's a decision. It's a decision. And, 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 and you see how we receive this. Verse 8 to 12 is a flashback. A flashback. Now, not to be sure, young. A flashback explaining the protection of how his brothers used to protect her. You know, your area was sister young though. She was young before she met Solomon. She grew up in a home where her brothers They use their, our sister is very young, and they use this phrase in verse 8. What will we do on the day she is spoken for? Referring to Sikwe Nyata, it is a kuoleka. Sikwe Nyata kujia, wata mkujia. Apo unawana ta presa sija form, they are instructing her in two things. In verse 9, wana sema, If our sister is a wall, we will build towers of silver. If our sister is a door, we will enclose her with panels of seed. See, this is what they are saying. And she's flashing back to some of the instructions that the brothers gave her when she was young concerning her future marriage. If she displayed good character and the judgment and resisted temptation, if she's a wall, then you are wall to protect A resist temptation. Our channel sexual morality and watch it, await, avoid pure. They are saying if you will be a good girl, good character, wait, resist all these things, then they will allow her a larger measure of freedom and they will reward her. Towers of silver. We will adorn you as people adorn towers with silver. People used to adorn towers with silver because towers used to protect them. So I said, we call war. It's a king of Japan and easy to sort. Now to preserve our system. We will adorn you. But if she were reckless and prone to immorality, she is a dog. If she opens her, 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 her life, her body, to advances like a dog, then they plan to restrict her freedom. Now, as we will enclose you with cedar and panics. Then we stop barricade. Stop with Mungia Kila Kiti. And, 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 from, and from, from her young age, and you know the instruction that many of us are receiving, that, if, that we will lose nothing by waiting, you lose nothing by preserving yourself. We will, we will actually adorn you as your brother. When they come asking you, like in your hands of who are you here? And you see, she actually allowed, she willingly submitted herself to the brother's discipline. Imagine how many we are to our poor and parties and structures. Nana, T, Nana, and we we'll see. And we we'll see she says in the next verse, she gives her own testimony that she is actually a wall. I have been pure. Therefore, she did not give restrictions that her brothers are talking about. Nana Sema, as a result of her being a wall, it has enabled her to give his husband content. Even Solomon, a man who had very many other women, has a 
has found contentment in her because she has not been awarded. And there is beauty, there is beauty, there is beauty in really following the instructions of God. And this is true to all of us. Whether you choose to be a ward or a dog. Whether you choose to be a ward. I, I, I remember, I remember, and, and title really does not allow me to say much then as we really come to the conclusion. A young man here, Peter and Gladys, to me end up to me end up in my power, it was to me end up in my power, it was to me end up in my power, it was to me end up in my power, it was to me end up in my power, it was to me end up in my power, it was to me end up in my power. Maybe this is an uncommon. So, I'm going to get to the next negotiation. Before we get over to the next person, I'm going to get to the next person. 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 So, I'm going to get to the next person. 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 Now, I say, of all my girls, Gladys was the last one. Family of eight, of all my girls. Hakuna tamoja menishi mutesi. This was a very old man. The first, the first one who had been a child of a high school. Hakuna, hakuna tamoja menishi mutesi. I say, my daughter, I'm worthy. When you are not in a school, I'm sure 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 Asema kuna tatu wangu mwoja mwile tapa manaume kuomba rusu. And this old man told us, for me that is a kakini, mimi hata siyo pesa zataka. Iyo ni nishima, iyo ni nanitosha. Kwa mazetu mechipanga kabisa mwaka. 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 Solomon, they are poor on our way of finding it. And here it now explains to us how these two people met. Kumbe, 
Solomon alikuwa na vineyards kwa kina msichana, alikuwa amerentia watu hizo vineyards. But other so huyu msichana alikuwa amerent vineyard ya Solomon. So alikuwa na wako kwa vineyard ya Solomon. Solomon had retreat and kuja kutembea hapo na kuwa shepherd. That's how they met and fought and fell in love. And she, she talks about that by me. Each tenant was to give enough grapes to make a thousand shekels of silver to the landowner of Solomon. And each tenant would receive 200 shekels of silver as his wages. No, no, no. Solomon's wife used to work. As a, as a young girl, as a virgin, she used to work in this by me. Under the brothers. And some of brothers, I'm going to find you, I'm going to find you, I'm going to it is while there that she met Solomon and fell in love with her. Now, I'm going to give you surprise. I don't know if it's a coincidence, but in the Bible, all beautiful women, all godly women, they were met by men when they were working. It's amazing. Wakati, wakati, wakati mtu alitumwa kwenda kutakutia Isaac Bibi, Rebecca alipatikana akienda kulisha kamels. Ukiangalia, ukiangalia zipora, Moses alimpata akifanya the same. She was working. Walikutana akiwajoo, wakua na slay. Ukiangalia Rachel. Ukiangalia Rachel. You know, they were godly women were found working. They were doing something with their life. And there, she was working in the vineyard and met with Solomon. While she was working. Hakuwa nasema misu wezi fanya kazi. Hakuwa nafanya kazi ya vineyard. Na palo alipenda. Kwa sabu hili onekana very clear. Sometimes the things we think that are actually attracting may not be. The worldly things are very different. So anasema my own vineyard, and this is a metaphor. Anasema but my own person. Anasema vineyard za Solomon alikuwa na peana kwa watu na unamulipa. Lakini anasema my own vineyard, referring to her life, referring to her love, referring to her now as a woman. Only she could give herself to another. My own vineyard, mi mwenye ndo ni na peana. My vineyard is mine to give. My love, my body, everything about me, me mwenye ni mwenye. And she freely chooses to give herself to Solomon. Even her possession, including her income, wa his. Aliamon mwenye kujipeana completely kwa hasakabwa. Sio nusu. Sio nusu. Completely. Mwenye kuna wasitiana ato wa fioleka squeeze mama na kwambia ukioleka wewe kuwa na account yako secret. Weka pesa yako ukundani. Secretly. Unuoma kuroti zako. Just in case. Hawa wana ume squeeze. <laughs> and the mothers in laws are breaking marriages. Voices outside there in the workplace squeezing back a marus is now going to staff from the high school. She has an amount of staff from squeezing and it's so toxic. We survive. We survive. department. You need to shut your ears. Marriages are literally being broken in the staff rooms. That is why one of the unique qualifications 
qualifications. One of the important things you need to experience, are they under the authority of God? Is that something that you've seen in their life? Is that practiced? Please walk out of those relationships. Stop it, stop it. Hakuna mali itakupeleka. Mtu wa ogopi mungu. Mambo ya mungu wakuna. Haku, yani chacha hakuna. Azini, you are very clear. Hakuna hapa usiana na mungu. When you see somebody submitted, submitted, submitted to the truth. You see people who are in the world. You see them breaking at sea. You see them even actually are people who are people are surrounding them with. They, you know, they have, they have godly counsel in there. And you can be able to see consistency. Kuna kitu kusu mungu. Yenye lazima ikuwe ni factor for you to say a relationship is God. Because that is the one thing that can make you fully give yourself without those fears. Without those fears. And you see the last two verses of the book of Song of Songs. Their love had not lost its intensity to the very last. It had not lost its intensity. He says to her, let me hear your voice. And she requested that he be like a gazelle. In their courtship, she had longed for him to take her as his bride. Now in their marriage, she longed with the same intensity for his strength and agility like a gazelle. To the very end, you see love. Intense. 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 It's possible. We pray that God saves our marriages. We pray that God heals our nation. We pray that God gives us the opportunity to experience love that is of God. Love that will not in bring us pain, bring us scars, bring us regrets. It's possible. It's possible to wait on God. Now patience, you patience, you Yani imagine. Imagine when a talker hapa upande gari hapo, hapo stage. Na ushike mwili yako urushe ndani ya gari na unaamini dereva atakufikisha tao. Auulizi hiyo dereva mzee kuna driving license macho yako inaona vizuri umekuta hii hapo blow umekunywa au mzani kwa maswali. Unarusha mwili ndani na ukoshwa atakufikisha. If you can dare trust a human being with your life in that sense. Can't you trust God in our lives? Can't you trust God? You know sangine unaona kama time kameenda ati nimefika 21 22 23 hakuna mwanaume anakuja hai bwana. Acha nitafute. Acha lakini kuna leo si ananipenda, si tunaingiana vizuri sasa hivi. Kenya tu hajaokoka. Tunaelewana, maybe Mungu wa maybe Mungu anasema kitu, maybe mimi ndio nitanungisha kwa wokovu. Who knows? Relationship is not an evangelistic platform. It's not. It's not. Mungu hajaongei relationship kwa njia ya kufanya wa sinners wakuja kwa kingu. And one of the way to win sinners is get you into a relationship with them. Never. It's people looking for justification to see. You can wait on God. At a time in Vienna, you would rather remain even single young girl, young man than be in a wrong relationship. God is faithful. Imagine Family is the most important unit, unit in this world as far as God's mathematics is concerned. And the Bible says all the days of your life are ordained in his book, were written in his book before even one of them came to be. That there is a God who has already ordained your life. There is a God who has already planned your day even before you came into this world. Psalm 139 tells us so. There is no better decision that you can make than to be confident that even if I may not know what tomorrow holds, even if I do not know how things will work out, that I can be able to faithfully walk with God in obedience to that which He reveals to me time over time over time. And in January, and I will wait for His time. I will wait for His time. But there must be things that are not compromises. We are not compromising about you being a believer. We are not compromising about the fruit of the life of this person. We are not to fight compromise. We should not compromise about walking together with other people that know God and love you enough to tell you the truth when you are wrong. We should not compromise. There are things we need not to compromise about as far as these things are concerned. Yes, kuna mahali ya wewe kutafuta. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. Kuna mahali ya wewe kutafuta. Na kuna mahali that we cannot be able to compromise on these things. So tomorrow we want to wrap up and make very practical applications. And look in light of
of all these truths we are learning all the way from the very beginning to the very end as a church of Jesus Christ what do we really need to be able to do so that we can be able to experience God's best this is a book that God has inspired by his spirit to be included in the world because it's a picture of that which is possible for two people that can be able to honor God of that which is possible a growing love that can be able to produce God's will in this world. So I want us to stand on our feet even as
you have been covering these sessions. You are, you are guilty of sexual immorality and you are saying I need forgiveness. I tell you what is sufficient. Some of us are carrying scars, pains, pains from home, pains from the way you have grown up. Bitterness, bitterness, bitterness over, you know, your father, bitterness over things that have made you to even have a very skewed perspective of, of love, of romance, of marriage. Tonight you can trust God for him. Some of us have pains that are real, we know them and we know nobody can better understand and comfort us other than the Spirit of God. And tonight you can open your heart to him and your life for him to minister to you. Some of us get some of the scars we have are abuses. You know, people have been raped, people have been molested, people have been abused sexually. And it has it has it has it has had a very great effect, trauma in your life, a very great fear that has taken over, and Satan is using that to even stop you to you are not progressing to stagnate you. Tonight I want to trust God to visit as many of us, to set us free, to give us freedom. To bring us back to the place that God wants us to be. There are people here that are saying, Lord, I need the boldness, the boldness to cut off an ungodly relationship. I'm in a relationship right now, it's ungodly. I need the boldness. I need, I need God to help me to make this decision and be firm about it no matter what. And to stand. Some of us have been so confused and decided we, we, we have no control of our bodies, we have no control of our appetites. The Bible says, ask, ask, ask. The Spirit of God wants to nurture within you self-control. If you are there, you are saying, please pray with me. Just lift up your hand. Just lift up your hand. Time may not allow us to come here, but I know God is here. God is here to visit us. But upon our decisions that you never find our life, I want you to look at those decisions. There are people who God is calling to walk out of this world tonight. Just like that woman who had been caught in adultery and speaking those words, Jesus says, I have forgiven you, go and sin no more. And you will walk out of here with the grace of God to sin no more. There are people that are walking here with a heart that is light. You can forgive, you can even call that person and say, I forgive you. I forgive you so that I can move on with peace. I forgive you so that I can be able to hope for the best. I forgive you so that I will not think that all men are the same. No, I can trust God. You can trust God for that. God wants to visit as many of us. Whatever area the Bible is speaking to you tonight, the word of God comes with the grace of the word. The grace of the word spoken tonight is here and God wants to be able to visit us. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I thank you because your power is greater than any other power. We thank you because you know us, my Father, better than any other man. You know our lives, you know our hidden secrets, oh God. There are many here that are living in condemnation. Condemnation because of sin. Condemnation because they have fallen in compromises. Condemnation because at a moment they gave in to the desires of their flesh. They did not honor you. They compromised sexually, O Lord. I pray, my Father, for the assurance of forgiveness. I pray that if they are coming from here with a repentant hand, O God, a heart that says, no, no, I will not go back to that life. I will not go back to those habits. O God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Tonight, let there be a release in their lives in the name of Jesus. We break the forces of the power of condemnation. And Father, I speak, Lord, the freedom that comes from you, O God. May you release an assurance, the assurance that you have indeed brought forth healing, O God. They are some in our midst that are paying, paying from wounds that are alive, wounds that have touched them, O God, that have affected them for some time now, O God. Some of them, Jehovah, are things that they have cried about, are things that have even affected them in many ways. I pray, Lord, by your grace, our Holy Spirit who is able to mend the broken hearted. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord. Tonight may you touch that heart. Tonight may you touch that soul, oh God. Tonight, my Father, may you break the power of bitterness. I come against the spirit of bitterness. I arise against the spirit of unforgiveness. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for a release of the heaviness that has been going over your heart. Be released right now in the name of Father, I pray for hearts and souls that are 
churches that they will not go back, oh God. I thank you for your word that has come to us tonight. You are giving us the picture of marriage as you have intended it to be. You are giving us the picture of love as you seek it to be, oh God. You are giving us a picture of commitment as you seek it to be, oh God. May you raise us to be men that will be able to exemplify that. May you raise here women that will be able to exemplify that. Not because of our abilities, but because of your grace. Not because we are skilled, but because you are in our lives. We pray, oh God, that you will heal this Kenya because your church is indeed working with your Father. We thank you that you will continue ministering to us even as we come to the end of this book, as we make practical applications, as we see how this Lord can indeed be things that we can model and even see how they can be lived out. May your word have the effect that 